Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneurs, one and all of us. We are, uh, again, inviting you to join us for another luminary interview. And I've got the very special privilege to, again, introduce you to Michelle Molitar. Now, um, if you haven't yet, already in the portal, we've got uh, in our Entrepreneur Excellence Alliance portal and out on social media, we have uh, an interview that, that she and I did here a while back that got a lot of attention, a lot of great feedback. And then uh, we followed that with a mastery session, basically a, a, a session where she demonstrated her work. And uh, I really want to encourage you to go back to that. But today, we're going to reopen the conversation with Michelle and, and head down a path that... Um, you know, uh, we we are reluctant to talk about. So before we get into that uh, that discussion, let me just say that Michelle has uh, practiced as a hypnotherapist and coach to uh, folks that are working their way from limited beliefs about pretty much anything: money, success, relationship, access to the, you know life being amazing. Uh, and she has a she she practices what's called rapid rewiring. It's a transformational modality that basically helps people rediscover themselves in a new way. And uh, having experienced a little taste of her magic, I can I give testimony to the fact that she's very very powerful, very effective. And uh, but don't take my word for it. I've talked to several other people that have also had a similar experience. Uh, she's got some chops. So Michelle, welcome again. And I can't wait to dive in today. Oh gosh. Thank you, Steve, for the warm welcome and the kind words. Um, I do love what I do yes. and it brings me a lot of joy to help people root out those old limiting beliefs that sometimes they don't even know are there and they've been yeah. there for decades and yes. um, let them go. And it just creates a whole new lightness of being. So I'm it's delighted to, to be here with you. It's amazing. So, so folks, look, uh, I want you to just picture yourself um, with a very, very large uh, backpack. Um, it's stuffed with uh, just all kinds of things. There's a couple of bricks in there. Uh, there's some stuff that probably some stinks rocks. a little bit. What's that? <laughs> some rocks. Some rocks. <laughs> And uh, I want you to picture yourself <clears throat> with that. Now, uh, picture yourself uh, facing um, uh, a, a significant hill that you have to that you have to climb. Well, what I've just described, and I that's com Michelle. That was completely um, uh, ad hoc. There, I didn't. I just I just made that up just this minute. But imagine, folks, that. Um, what we have in the, is, is a backpack that we're carrying around, and we're going to call it out today with Michelle. And then the hill that I just described that you're about ready to, uh, to, to, to trek up uh, with or without that heavy backpack, your choice, so lean in and pay attention here, is the next biggest achievement that you want to have happen in your life. Now, what's in that backpack that's weighting us down is a limiting to belief that oftentimes is, is called or, or known as imposter syndrome. It's the, it's the false or limiting belief that we're not as big as we want everybody to think we are, <laughs> essentially. But before I get too deep into that, Michelle, I want you to define imposter syndrome and specifically how it applies to those of us that are trying to make things happen, big things happen in the world around us as an entrepreneur. Sure, sure. You're absolutely right, Steve. Uh, imposter syndrome is that false belief that I'm not as smart as others think I am. I'm not as talented as others think I am. It's just a fluke that I happen to be in this place and, and accumulated these different accolades and awards. Many, many people, 70% of adults worldwide suffer from imposter syndrome at some point in their lives no matter what their level of success. And it tends to creep in and fall away and creep in and fall away. And it prevents us from listening to ourselves, to our intuition, trusting our gut. Um, it prevents us from taking those 
big courageous steps that we need to take, especially as entrepreneurs, where we oftentimes just have to leap and yeah. build the airplane as we fly, as we're right? Flying it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm in that club. Hey, I yeah. just figured it out. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, here we go. What are we doing? Right. Um, and and inside, underneath the underbelly of imposter syndrome, what I found in my 20 years as a coach is um self-doubt right? Mm -hmm. It's that little niggly voice in the back of your head of like, I don't know about that. You sure? You sure that's safe? Are you sure you want to do that? Remember what your dad said or your mom said, who are you, right? All of those voices that we've heard in our lives from other people that were critical, that we took on to be some truth about us. Because oftentimes those voices show up when we're, when we're kids, right? Our parents say things, our siblings say things, a teacher, a neighbor, a whoever. And, and we literally don't have the full brain capacity as children. Our brains haven't fully matured yet to go, oh, that's not true about me, right? So we go, oh, well, my dad said that I was crap, or my mom said, you're worthless, or who are you, or don't, don't be too big, right? And we took it on as a truth, a as belief truth. about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then it, it just festers. It sits there quietly in our subconscious programming, right? Think of it as a nice computer and yeah. the, the deep files, right? The hard drive. You've just got this programming that's been running you and how to move through the world safely. Yeah. You know? And it's, you know, a, a couple of things come to mind right away, Michelle. Um, uh, it is... Uh, and that's a great analogy. It is just sort of running in the background, isn't it? It's, it's something that we, uh, we want to, um, uh, or we don't pay attention to. And uh, I'm going to ask you here in a minute how to recognize it when it shows up. I think if the, the guy's the first foothold to, uh, uh, to, to get in a handle on it. But first, just a, a quick personal story that that uh, illustrates what Michelle's talking about here. And some of you heard me, uh, some of you have heard me talk about this. When I was in the fourth or fifth grade, we were um, at school preparing for the Christmas concert, uh, singing uh, to the. We were going to have the parents come in, listen to us uh, uh, sing Christmas carols. And in the middle of our practice session, um, the teacher stopped everybody. Stop! 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 And pointed up to me, I was in the back row. She pointed up to me and she looked me, she pointed her finger right at me and, and looked at me. She said, you just move your lips on this one. And of course, all the, all the kids laughed. They thought that was hilarious. It obviously was communicating that I was kind of taking the whole chorus off or the whole choir, uh, you know, uh, off, off tune or off balance in some way. And I did until fast forward into way into adult life. When somebody heard me sing, I, I believe that I couldn't sing until I was in the shower one day and somebody heard me sing and said, well, you have a pretty good voice. And it's just amazing. You're so right. The, the, the information that we internalize that we can carry through our entire life is so very powerful and causes us to make probably bad decisions. You know, shoot, I, I might have. Uh, who knows what I could have done? I might you could have been, been a rock on, star. Right? <laughs> I could have been a rock star, but I didn't believe that I could sing. So, so tell us, that's so very powerful, folks. And you've got to understand that we're all subject to that. In fact, I would, I would even argue none among us doesn't have some version of this going on. And, and uh, Michelle just stated a, a research fact that 70% suffer from imposter syndrome. So Michelle, how do we recognize it before it just gets, you know, before life gets so miserable that we have to pay attention? How, how can we catch this and notice it so we can do something about it? What are the signs? That's such a, that's such a great question. And I just have to say, Steve, I'm, I was smiling over here because I had the same similarly different story from sixth grade choir of like, Oh, oh no, mm -mm. right. So same. <laughs> oh, I can't so sorry. Oh, no. mm -mm, don't ask. Well, me okay. To, you right? and I'll have to do a, 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 <laughs> an album then one of these days. <laughs> exactly. And I'm sure there's plenty of other folks yeah. in the tribe listening go, Oh, me too. Me too. Yes, right? yes. Um, but no, the, the way to start overcoming that is just noticing 
The very first step is noticing what's the internal dialogue that you're having with yourself. Listening are you to beating what we, yourself what up? Are you, are you talking negatively to yourself? Oh, I can't sing for crap. Mm-mm, no, right? And just notice that. Is that true? Mm. I don't, uh, well, I don't know. That's just what I was told, right? And so we take on those things that we've been told and we don't question them. And so as adults, we get to stop and question that little voice of self-doubt. Mm-hmm. Well, who am I? Well, who am I? I am pretty darn good at what I do. And I'm, you know, whatever. You get to fill in the blanks for yourself with regards to whatever that, that limiting belief is. Let's, let, let me pause you on that because that I find in, in, in my work, uh, I can hear it. I spot it right away when somebody is talking themselves out of something for really no reason <laughs> at all. Um, uh, what do you say to the person? Because I know that there, well, there's two, there's two, two, uh, voices that I can literally predict are listening here, uh, to our, to our discussion. Uh, one is the person that says, uh, that denies that they've got this going on, these old tapes as they call them. Right. Um, the person that's, you know, likes, likes to see themselves, prefers to see themselves as confident and self-assured and all that. And, oh, I don't have any negative talk. I don't have any, you know, so there's that person. And then there's also the person that goes, uh, that may recognize it, but say, but I don't know how, I don't know how to, what you just said, um, uh, choose to create a different dialogue, to create a different script. So help us with, if you can, I know I'm asking two questions at once here, but take your time. Well, um, help, help us with both of those things. First, the, the guy or gal that, that thinks they don't, you know, don't have a problem here. What do you, what, tell us the truth, Michelle, hit us right upside the head. And then, and then, uh, and then the other one, I, I, uh, that the doesn't know how, uh, I'm sure you've got some answers for. Yeah. So for someone who says, oh, I don't have any challenges with self-confidence or self-doubt. Great. Tell me about a pattern that's happening in your life where you feel stuck. Mm. Because everybody's got one somewhere, somehow. Whether stuck. I'm, I'm working my butt off, but it's not wor- it's not moving. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been trying this for a long, long time, but it hasn't come together. Um, I can't uh, find I've the got- relationship I want. I can't make the money that I want. I can't have the health that I want. Check, 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 right? Go down yeah. the list. And if there, if, if you don't have any stuck spots in your life, kudos, more power to you. Like I'm super, super impressed. Yeah. And there's probably some place in there where you're going, yeah, there's this one thing that I just can't quite seem to overcome. That's Mm -hmm. the place where those limiting beliefs are coming into play. And for, for that person who's got that confidence, it just tells me that those beliefs are very subterranean, right? Mm-hmm. They're very deeply embedded in their subconscious. So they're just not even aware that it's running them. Yeah. And so awareness is really the first step of noticing, huh? I'm noticing that I have this stuck spot in relationship in, in relation to this thing in my business and my life and my relationship and my right. health. Right. Right. And then allowing yourself the grace, not from a place of judgment, but just of noticing curiosity, right? Childlike wonder of what is the conversation I have about that? I like that uh, because we can go, we can totally go there, can't we? We can start to beat ourselves up and create yet another, actually, re- uh, I would, I don't know, tell me if I'm right here, are we, are the, we actually reinforcing the very thing that we're trying to, that we, that we don't, uh, yeah, we don't want to have by criticizing ourselves about it. Yeah, yeah, totally. totally. It's, it's beating us down. We're the one. We're the voice that's beating us down uh, and feeling less than. Um, and uh, and as you said, we we have a choice. So let's speak about that. What do you say to the person that goes, "Yeah, I know. I I I've got this." Actually, before we go there, uh, let me hit this uh, because I, I, I'm sure you'll agree, but uh, let's call it out. Uh, folks, um, uh, everything uh, in life is connected. And if you've got 
a limiting belief about relationship, for example, like Michelle's talking about. Uh, if you think that doesn't have anything to do with your business success, you're kidding yourself. Uh, if you've got a limiting belief about, uh, you know, your, your, uh, whether or not you can uh, uh, look and feel healthy, uh, and, and that has a direct line to how you're going to do and how you're going to present in the world of business. So I, I see you're nodding your head. You, you agree with that. It's all connected. Yeah. Oh, it's all connected. I mean, if you boil, let's get really geeky here for a minute, Steve, you boil us all down. We're all just energy, right? Okay. Yeah. We're just all energy formulated in this form or that form or that form. And energy is never ending and it's all connected. So if you look at it from the quantum physics level, it's like, whoa, okay. So I, you are the same thing as the stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. Different configuration, same thing. Same thing, energy. Different, yep. different shell. Yeah. So, and, yeah. So we can't get around that, that uh, we're, we're not compartmentalized. We're a whole being and it's all connected. Yeah. Right. Very good. Right. I love it. Great, great analogy too, uh, by the way. So, okay. So let's head into this. So, uh, all right, Michelle, I know I, 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 I beat myself up all the time about this thing or that thing or this, you know, whatever I know I've got, but I don't know how, I don't know how to turn it off. I don't know how to, you know, I don't know where the switch is. Um, what, what do you say to that person? So, Yay for you that you've recognized that there's this thing that's got you caught in a spin cycle, right? Okay. Um, and, and so listening to, pausing to listen to whatever that voice is telling you, writing it down, and then write out what's the exact opposite of it. What's the exact positive opposite of that belief? So if the belief is say, I, I can't create a successful business. You know, we've got lots of entrepreneurs here. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, but yet I keep falling short. I keep yep. falling short. Yep. Um, write that down. And then what's the exact positive opposite of it? So what would, would you, you, what would you tell your client? What's the exact positive opposite of that? Well, what I, I, I just did this uh, this morning. What I do is I say, tell me about a time in your life that you uh, accomplish something that you're very, very proud of still today. And then, and then what we do is, is, is we basically give evidence, put evidence about their capability that overshadows or turns around the negative belief about what they don't think they can do or accomplish. So that's, that's my approach. Uh, um, you know, in, in, as an entrepreneur, um, you know, uh, we have, let's see, let me say it this way. As entrepreneurs, we all have had some experience where we saw something wrong, missing, insufficient, whatever. We had a fist pounding moment and then we did something about it. Yeah. And, and, and off we went. So is that what you're looking for? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's literally as, as simple as I, I don't believe in myself to, I do believe in myself. I can't be successful. I can, can be, successful. be successful. And then giving yourself proof even amplifies that further. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's noticing, writing out what are all those negative thought conversations you're having and then flipping them on their heads and then telling yourself a different story. Right. Even if it feels weird, even if you're like reading off a piece of paper, no, I can be successful yet. Check. I can believe in myself. Check. I am enough. Check. Right. In doing that and doing that repetitively, that repetition is what builds new neural pathways in your brain. Right. So, right. so, one of the things that I, I create for my clients is a customized transformation recording. And mm. we're taking all these new beliefs, thoughts, and habits, right? Based on our conversations. And I'm weaving it into this, this conversation with their mind. I mix in binaural beat music with it. And then they listen to it every night for 30 days because that repetition is 
building those new neural pathways that builds the new go-to place in that moment of stress because the self-doubt shows up when we're stressed. Mm -hmm. Am I going to be able to pay pay my bills this month? Am I going to be able to follow through? Am I going to be able to dot, 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 right? And then the the self-doubt comes flooding in. Well, I don't know, all of that. So the more you can bolster your mind with these new beliefs and catch yourself more quickly, right? That that thought wanders in. Well, no, no, this is just going to fail like the last time. Nope, pattern interrupt. I've got this. I can do this. I believe in myself. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, Mm -hmm. right? So that you're reshaping your thoughts to take you in the direction that you really want to go versus the three steps backwards that you're trying to avoid. I love it. And so, um, Michelle, what I, one of the things I really appreciate about you is, uh, this isn't, you know, what, what you teach, what you do is not some sort of woo woo kind of stuff. There's science based here. And, and uh, what you just said, I think is really powerful. Folks uh, kind of lean into this. You, the reason that you have any limiting belief or self-talk that's negative and, and destructive is because you've been practicing that. And what you just heard Michelle suggest is that we start practicing a new conversation. It's as simple as that, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it is. It's catching yourself and telling yourself a new story. So I always, I always say to my client, Steve, you know, we have these stories, these events that have happened in our lives and we replay them over and over and over again. And that emotional trigger gets triggered over and over and over again. Oh, I'm not lovable. Oh, I'm not worthy enough. Oh, I'm not enough. Right. Whatever it is based on that story. And so through my work, tapping into your subconscious mind, we get at the root of that story, that event in your life where that, that idea was planted initially. And then we, we change it. We eliminate, we neutralize the emotional charge around it because that's what keeps getting you tripped up. Gotcha. So that then you can look back on that event and it's just, Oh, it's just my history. It no yeah. longer presses that trigger button anymore. There, I, I, that's great. Uh, that's brilliant. Yeah. So uh, it's not so much that the teacher told us we couldn't sing. It's that it made us feel bad when she did. And so we've got to squash that, eliminate it, uh, disempower it somehow. And you're telling us a very simple and, and easy thing to do. And that is just to practice a new conversation. In my case, it would be, I'm a great singer, you know? Right. If, you're, that. if your mom or your dad had said to you that day, you came home crying from, from fourth grade, oh, I can't sing, right? And your mom and dad said to you, no, Steve, you're an amazing singer. You're a fabulous singer. We love your voice. Please sing more for us. You would have gone, oh, oh okay. Yeah. And you would have sung your little heart out, right? Regardless go. of what the teacher said to you. Because they caught it and created a new conversation. Right. But now as adults, we have to do it. Now, what we can't do today in this session is what you're so good at, so uh, powerful at, and that is to, to go in back to that source, uh, that, that place that, uh, that, that created the emotional trigger, but that doesn't mean folks that you can't do something about it now. So let's say more in the context of business about where imposter syndrome, uh, if, if we, if you if we can go here, Michelle, where imposter syndrome shows up and what is the cost? What is it that actually ends up, um, uh, what are the implications of, this false belief that we might be thinking about whether what we're capable of, I'm not as good as they think. I, you know, I put all this great stuff on my LinkedIn profile, for example, but you know, really if they knew the rest of the story, they wouldn't, they wouldn't think I'm yeah. So tell us more about how this applies to business and then, and then specifically um, the cost, I think it would help us, uh, uh, motivate to, 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 to start trying to reprogram here? Sure, sure. Well, the cost of believing that 
that negative self-talk, that false truth about yourself causes you to hide out, to play small, to not ask for the raise or the promotion or the kudos that you deserve. Um, it has you not take that leap of faith. It can prevent you from raising your hand, speaking up, speaking your truth, bringing your expert opinions to the table, right? Um, all of which over time builds up. It you'll continue to create these walls of protection around you, right? That keep you separate and mm -hmm. keep you from shining your authentic self, your true voice, your, your true personality. So people don't get the best of you. The very, They're just they're getting very a, a fraction of you. I love it. Yeah. The very thing that you uh, want to uh, be known for or change the world about is being held back because of this. I, I, I love your term there about playing small. You're, you're basically neutering your ability to, to do the very thing that got you in business in the first place. So uh, that, that's, that's really powerful. So um, when we, I've, I've heard a lot of, of uh, you know, numbers, you know, not, it doesn't happen every day, I guess, but I've heard a number of, of gurus and speakers and so forth address this, this thing about um, imposter syndrome. But it's usually addressed as though there's an on off switch, like you just want you like, don't think that way anymore. Okay. Uh, I'll try. To, I'll try. <laughs> so you and I know this. Have you ever, have ever tried to stop brushing your teeth with your, with your dominant hand and like, Oh, I'm just going to use my other hand now. Great no. analogy. It just doesn't. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, so help us with the reality check on, um, uh, what does it take? What, I mean, is, is, are we talking about, and I'm, I'm baiting you just a little bit here. Um, but it, does it, is this something where we've got to go to, you know, invest in, in, in 10 years of therapy to get all this stuff, uh, fleshed out or is there, yeah, give us, give us an idea. Is there and, a faster way? Yes. There, I wonder if there there's a is, faster Steve. way. There is a faster way. So as a learning junkie, <laughs> I've been I've been in the personal development realm for 20 plus years and I'm got trainings and certifications and thousands of hours of study in in these realms of personal development and coaching and hypnotherapy and and neuroscience <laughs> and all sorts of things because I'm terribly impatient. Mm. Terribly. And Therapies, they all have their place. There's, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy or talk therapy. There's um, somatic therapy. There's coaching. Um, there's psychotherapy. There's all these different ways of getting at these limiting beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. And the work that I stumbled into um, called rapid transformational therapy or RTT changed my world in a matter of weeks. And so I went on to get trained and certified and I've added other hypnotherapy modalities as well, like heart healing, um, somatic therapy, all sorts of things into what I now call rapid rewiring, which brings coaching and hypnotherapy together to address those limiting beliefs at a subconscious level and a conscious level, right? They supercharge each other in a matter of 30 to 90 days and they're able to help people get at those deeply held, oftentimes completely unconscious beliefs that they have that are stopping them in all these areas that we've been talking about and rewire their thinking, literally build those new neural pathways in the short period of time to create exponential change in their lives. Um, I've had clients who've come to me um, with business challenges and with an, oh, by the way, I'm having this terrible health challenge as well. Mm -hmm. And like, I really want to grow my business, but every time I, I get it to a certain point, my health fails or I get IBS or I get adrenal fatigue. And 
through this work, I've been able to help people get at those root causes that was creating the drivers in an unhealthy way that then had them create massive shifts in their business, but massive shifts in their health and well-being as well, yeah. eliminating or significantly reducing things like IBS, adrenal fatigue, chronic migraines, um, arthritis, psoriasis, because the emotions that are not felt, that, that aren't processed, eventually you're going to come out in some other way. Right. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, is by um, Dr. Henry Maudsley, who was a psych psychotherapist in like the 1800s. Mm. And he said, emotions that cannot find their vent in tears will cause other organs to weep. Oh, wow. So that chronic low back pain that someone has is oftentimes unprocessed, unfelt emotions. That was, that was me. I had severe back pain. I had bulging discs at L4, L5. I had um, multiple sets of, of shots to my back. I was on serious painkillers. And sadly, a dear friend of mine passed away unexpectedly. And we, we created this beautiful ceremony of life for her. And I cried my eyes out for hours. And within like a week, my back pain went away. Mm. I was like, it was such a huge aha moment for me to recognize, oh, because all of that crying, it was a lot of other of my own unprocessed emotions right. about things that had happened in my life. Right. Because I grew up in a very stoic family, right? Oh, you're fine. Don't be so feely. Don't be so gushy, right? And I'm all of that and so much more. <laughs> so it was such a massive release that the pain in my back went away and has not returned. And that was like 10 years ago. That's that's phenomenal. Well, yeah, I mean, you're just, you're illustrating even, even uh, more profoundly that uh, this thing that we talked about earlier about uh, everything's connected and... Uh, uh, this is so valuable. And, and folks, look, um, uh, I, I want you to, I want to be clear. I said, I touched on this, but let's, let's say it again. This is science-based stuff. This is practical stuff. It affects at least 70% of us. Maybe, I don't know. We haven't done, I don't, I haven't seen the study yet, Michelle, but I'll, I'll bet that, uh, entrepreneurs are probably more likely to face imposter syndrome, negative beliefs, you know, et cetera, uh, because we're out there trying to make things happen. We're not just sort of riding along and, and, uh, um, you know, uh, kind of just pat Biden time, you know, and, and so the harder you press in, the harder it pushes out or pushes back. And, uh, so this is really, really valuable stuff, folks. And, and Michelle, thank you, man. Uh, what a, what a, what a great, uh, enlightening perspective we're getting today. Now, um, I'm, I'm tempted to, um, uh, to uh, uh, have you demonstrate, but I won't. Uh, what can people do if they're interested, if they recognize? Well, actually, let's speak to both of these folks. If you think, if you think that you don't have anything going on that's holding you back, you probably need to reach out to Michelle and have a conversation, not because she's going to make you feel bad, but because she's going to help you realize that maybe there is something. And then those of you that think that, um, uh, that, that you really don't have a handle on, on what to do about all this and, or want to accelerate it. Like we just talked about, uh, Michelle, you've got some wonderful resources and some new things coming up here that I want everybody to know about. So tell us, tell us more. Yes. Yes, Steve. Thank you so much. So yeah, you know, I, I am a creative being to my core and I'm always coming up with new things and new ways to be of service to my community. So um, I have a, a new self-doubt finder quiz um, to help identify what's your self-doubt archetype, right? There's five archetypes. And once you identify your archetype, it's the first step in noticing. And then 
laser focusing on that. So then you can shrink that self-doubt and eliminate it and reclaim your confidence, right? So that's step one. Step two is um, you can come join me in my new free masterclass that is launching on Monday. Actually, I'm super excited about it. Um, Nice. And it's called Taming Your Self-Doubt. And it's a 90-minute um, free workshop. We'll be talking about these self-doubt archetypes, how they're getting in your way, how they're blocking your success. And I'll also be doing a little mini taster session of this work um, nice. to take you into that very relaxed state and help you start to reprogram your mind in a way that is really powerful and beneficial for folks. Love it. And, okay. And, and then... Right. But wait, there's more. But wait, but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Um, And then in March, I'm going to be launching a new course, a new seven week group course called How to Become Unshakable. So lots of fun stuff. um, And I'll share those links with you and can share them out. We'll get them in the notes. uh, And the first two things uh, that Michelle mentioned there are free and and, uh, absolutely uh, I took the assessment shortly after she uh, published it, I think. I was pretty soon, pretty quick there. And it's very insightful, uh, very, very well done. And it, it just takes a few minutes. It's not a big heavy duty thing at all, but it's, it, uh, especially for those of you that, that uh, uh, aren't quite sure that you got, you, you got what we're talking about here, <laughs> this will help you crystallize it. And then your your free session there, uh, the ninety minute uh, course, I think is uh, is really uh, uh, powerfully uh, is powerfully equipping people to actually start taking action on what they now know about themselves. So uh, I love it. So Michelle, you're a gift. You're 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 absolutely uh, uh, changing the world in a very positive way. And and uh, yeah, let's let's. Uh, uh, let's, let's spin up the, um, uh, what, what do they call those? Um, the, the, um, the little devices that, that to create the background music, um, when people are, um, you know, what, what, God, well, I can't think of the name of it, but there's this, there's this device that musicians use to create the background beat and the, and the background rhythm and stuff. We should spin that up. <laughs> okay and, the beatbox be, yeah exactly and again create our own album here one of these days so I, I love it all right folks uh wonderful conversation today with michelle very much uh uh encourage you to tap into her resources uh this is something that i think we all uh will benefit from and uh uh, so, Michelle, thank you once again for your generosity and insights today. It's been uh, great again to, to bring you into the conversation. Mm, thank you so much, Steve. It's been uh, a blessing to be here with you and to share this. You know, it's just my mission yeah. to help thousands of people uh, reclaim their confidence from their self-doubt and, and live more authentically and joyfully, because that's what we're here to do. That's right. That's what we all uh, were put on the planet for a purpose. So, folks. Uh, Re-listen to this, reach out to Michelle, and until we speak again, strive on, drive on, and thrive on to entrepreneur excellence. Talk soon. Hey, thanks again for listening. Look, if you're interested and serious about applying the wise insights from luminaries like you just heard from, I want to invite you, challenge you, in fact, to check out the Entrepreneur Excellence Alliance. Just go to entrepreneurexcellence.com. You'll see a very inspiring uh, video that we put together that outlines our manifesto. And then a button will link you right on over to all the assets, the resources, the tools that we've compiled. You see, the Alliance is a team, a tribe, a community of entrepreneurs just like you that are striving to truly attain excellence, their lifetime best in every aspect of both business and life. Peer collaboration at its best, world-class coaching, abundant resources. You need to check it out, entrepreneurexcellence.com. And we'll see you over there.